Hello and welcome to another exciting Breakfast with Unity. I'm your host, Max Moreau, and uh, what we're going to be doing today is uh, we're going to be looking at doing some parallax scrolling in 2D for um, an example. This is going to be a pretty simple one, though I'm going to show two, two ways how to set this up um, that are useful. Um, so let's get started. So first of all, um, I want to give a shout out to uh, Enzimu's Games because they are providing the art for this background. Um, this is all CC zero, so it's not a big deal. But um, um, but uh, I like to give the credit to people anyway. So so yeah, this is where I got the stuff from. Um, the license is also included in the in the files. So, uh, so that you can see that when you download them from, from us. Uh, the files actually are located in the project right now under, sorry, third-party licensed um, Parallax Forest Pack. So, so we got this nice PSD file, which if you have Photoshop is really useful. And then he also, uh, they also were nice enough to uh, keep the backgrounds um, as separate options here too. So, so um, what we're going to do first is we're going to set up our scene to actually view these uh, these pieces of art and make them the proper sizes. So, so these are 256 by 128. I guess it doesn't really matter what our scene sizes are, but um, but yeah. So um, what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to make our camera par uh, orthographic. This will make it so that. Um, Normally, when you have a camera set up perspective, um, it renders things like our eye renders things. Our eye is curved, and um, and you'll see things that are at slightly different in angles. Um, actually, rather, you'll see things that are at different distances. They'll change size. Um, but uh, you can also do a orthographic projection, which is this big old box that just goes on to infinity. In this case... Um, everything the camera sees, it will never change no matter how distant it is from the camera. This is pretty standard for 2D games because you don't want to actually scale the sprites in 2D games. I'm not saying you can't. You, there's obviously 2D games that scale sprites, but, um, but this is typically how you work with 2D. Um, if you have like a 2.5D game, you're going to use, um, you're going to mo more than likely use perspective so that you can get perspective and then have the 2D elements on certain layers. So we're going to start with the orthographic and I'm just going to keep the the size um, options as they are right now and um, and size just adjusts the uh, the actual size of the thing so so um, if you do five this means it's five units up five units down and then whatever the aspect ratio units times uh, five left and right so uh, so the total total number of units if I put an object at um, if I create an empty object, Put the camera at zero zero so that we know that we're right on the thing, and we put. Uh, sorry, I didn't want an empty game object. Let's put like a cube or something useful, something we can see, and we'll put it uh, at zero zero zero. Um, you can see that if we go into the game view, it looks like a um, a uh, square, and no matter how we light this, it's going to look like a square because we can only see one side at all because we're doing a parallax projection. And again, it doesn't matter how far away the cube is from the scene, it will look the same until it disappears because it went behind the camera. So, um, but if we put it at five, it should be, yep, halfway right up off the top of the screen, negative five, we'll bring it to the bottom. And then the left and right, you'd have to calculate based on whatever your aspect ratio, in this case, 16 by nine, so you would just do, um, 16 divided by 9 times 5, so 16 divided by 9 times 5. So if you just did that, we could um, put that on the X and see it'll show up right on the edge of the screen. So um, the reason this is in the middle is because we're basing this on the middle of the object. It, the outsides don't matter in this case. So um, now that I've shown that, let's set up our scrolling here. So we're not going to set these up as sprites. And the reason we're not is because... Um, these are designed to scroll infinitely, and so it's really easy to do that by just doing a texture offset, which you can't really do with sprites. So we're going to just use them as textures, and uh, they're already set to be repeating by default, although um, they're all pixel art, so I'm going to change the filter mode to point. This will make them look much sharper. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is, um, I'm just going to drag... I'm just going to create some materials, actually. So um, let's just create some materials real quick. So we're going to do create material. 
we can call this pair uh, layer one. And we're just going to put parallax forest pack trees. Actually, what layer, what order do these go, so, go in? So it's black trees, gray trees. I don't know where the light goes. Probably somewhere after. Yeah, okay. So, so front trees is actually what we want for layer one. Parallax front trees. And we're just going to duplicate this and just create. Yeah, whatever. Just keep doing this. And layer two is going to be our next tree layer, I think. Either that or it's the lights. We can always readjust these later. Um, so back trees. Oh, wait, there's back trees and middle trees. So back trees is probably layer four. That's not what I wanted to do. Wanted to layer four, back trees, layer two, middle trees, and layer three will be the forest lights. The other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure that these are set to, um, so alpha is transparency, we want set on the three that are transparent. So alpha is transparency. Hit apply. There we go. Now you can much more clearly see what these pieces of art look like. So that doesn't matter too much when you start importing it into the objects. So it doesn't. It's not a big deal. But um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a quad, and this quad is going to be what contains our um, one of our elements. So again, it's just spawning these in a really stupid place right now. I'm going to look at it so that hopefully it won't do that again. So um, usually it spawns based on where the scene camera is pointed or focused at. So so it was focused on the camera, and that's the reason it was spawning kind of on top of the camera. So I'm just going to give this one the layer one, um, and uh, and what we're going to do is okay. So first of all, this isn't transparent. So if we if we make this um, big enough to fit the screen, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to make uh, the Y ten. Or is it five? Yeah, it's ten. Yeah, so ten, and then we already had the other one set as like eight, 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 or something. So we're just gonna do um, eight point, or sorry, sixteen point, or seventeen point uh, four, 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 four. Probably not enough. Five, seventeen point five. All right. 17.875, there we go, all right, so there we go, so um, we have this here and it looks really, really odd right now, and the reason it looks odd is because uh, we're not actually using the transparency, so we need to make sure that our shaders are set to um, transparent, um, and in this case we can use cutout, I believe, um, so we're going to do diffuse, yay, there we go, so now we have the nice, you can see the blue background behind there. And so I'm just going to um, set this up. So we're going to call this layer one. And I'm just going to duplicate it three times again. Two, three, and four. And so we're going to throw layer two on layer two, layer three on layer three, and layer four on layer four. And then we're going to make sure that all these are set appropriately so the final layer can just be standard diffuse because there's actually no transparency in it. But the layers above it, uh, we want to set to um, transparent cutout. Transparent cutout diffuse. All right, so now it's in here, but we've got them in slightly the wrong orders, and that's because we haven't actually set them three-dimensionally yet. So what we're going to be doing is just... Um, Remember, we can move these back and forward as much as we want, and it won't change the scale. So just uh, just give some clearance on them. I'm just going to move them like one unit apart each. So layer one will keep at uh, zero. Actually, I'm going to put layer one at negative one. And yeah, wait, what is it doing? Okay, why is it moving the camera? Oh, it's because I'm focused on it. That's weird. Okay, well, negative one. Yeah, one. There we go. So one is away from the camera. There we go. That's fine. So um, layer two we'll put at two. 
Layer three we'll put at three, and layer four we'll put at four. And let's see how that looks. Ah, that looks cool. So now let's make this thing scroll. So uh, we're gonna set it up as an auto scroller first, and then we'll do something that allows you to kind of have more control over which, which way things are scrolling. So, so we're just gonna set this up so that it will scroll. So um, I'm gonna call this um, um, auto scroll, um, auto scroll texture offset. Actually, what, do we have anything that does texture offset already? Random texture offset and okay, so this is the one we just made, so that's perfect. Auto scroll te texture offset. Alright, we're gonna make this generally useful. So um, we're going to use a public vector uh, three or vector two um, uh, scroll speed. And we're going to default this to vector2.1. This represents a vector2 that has a 1 in each category. So this will scroll diagonally by default. That's not what we want in our case, but remember I say useful defaults for things. So always make it do something with the default values. And that way you can see that it's working and then change it. Um, so uh, what are we doing with the scroll speed? It's very simple. Um, in update, what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, uh, just uh, do render dot uh, render dot material dot um, offset set texture offset. Actually, is there an earlier one? Dot... No, there's not. Material dot main texture offset. This is actually the one we want. So all we're gonna do is main texture offset plus equals um, scroll speed times time dot delta time and that's all actually we need to do because this is already a vector 2 and then we multiply it by time dot delta time uh, we may make some minor adjustments to this but this should already work so all we're going to do now is we're going to go back in here and we're going to attach this script to each of our layers so I'm just going to select all of them do add component auto scroll texture offset and if we just hit play Wool is very odd looking, but it will work, hopefully. We'll find out. There we go. It's scrolling, yay! So, um, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to actually change this so that the scroll speed is only in the X. And we're going to make it so that the front ones move faster than the back ones. So I'm going to make uh, the second layer move at 0 0.5. We're just going to do some, some test values here. 0 0.75, actually. Let's go with 0.75. And then layer three is 0 0.5, and layer four is 0 0.25. So if we hit play now, we should get this sweet scrolling background. Yeah, that looks awesome. And it goes forever. And all it's doing is it's actually just staying in one place. It's, it's like playing a slideshow behind, uh, behind wherever the player might be. And so this will work if you're doing an infinite runner. Um, and this is actually advantageous in an infinite runner because what uh, happens is you'll get precision errors if you're moving away from the origin eventually. And so if we keep the player on the screen and just scroll the background to make it look like he's moving, you'll feel like you're moving, but um, you won't actually be moving and you'll keep the precision. However, to do that, we need to do one minor change to the script. So right now, when we do this, um, you'll see that the texture offset is continually changing and it just goes up. And this will also suffer precision issues once the numbers get incredibly high. It's not usually a big issue, honestly, even in infinite scrolling games, because the, the truth about infinite scrolling games is no one ever has scrolled infinitely. So, so uh, um, unless you're a real high score person, you might not ever run into this issue, even if the game had it. But we can avoid it very quickly by just making it so if... Um, we'll just do a couple of checks. So, um, um, if... Actually, I guess we can just uh, drop the, um, yeah, okay. So if um, scroll speed dot x is greater than or equal to, is greater than or equal to 1.0f. Actually, I'm going to make this a while loop. And that sounds strange, but it's just in case you scroll faster than you intended to scroll. Um, 
so and you manage to skip a whole unit, this won't mess things up still. So uh, while it's greater than or equal to 0 1.0f, we're going to do scroll speed dot x. Oh, whoops. That's not actually what we want to check. We want to check the main texture offset. So let's um, let's do that here. Um, I'm going to create a new variable, actually. Sorry. Uh, float. Um, actually, let's do vector to current um, final texture offset equals main texture offset. And actually, let's do that up here. All right, so final texture offset equals main, main texture offset. We're going to do final texture offset plus equals this. And before I forget, at the very end, we're going to set, because I forget this all the time, we're going to actually set our temporary variable that we just created, render the material that main texture sucks into, into there. So, so file texture offset. So the reason we're, we're doing this is because we're going to be clamping these values, basically. So so while scroll speed dot x is greater than 1.0f, uh, uh, and actually we're not calling it scroll speed, we're calling it file texture offset dot x. Um, file texture offset dot x minus equals 1.0f. So this will automatically decrement. We'll just do the same thing for for less than or equal to well, we'll do less than zero. Um, then we will do plus equals 1.0f. And then um, we will do the same for the y. Y, 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 y. And finally, there we go. All right. A lot of code for this check, but it does, it will help us. So, so now when we hit play, it'll look exactly the same. Um, but what's happening here is um, we've got, uh, it's clamped to zero and one. And so everything's working perfectly. The reason this works again is because at zero, you're at the far left of the texture. At one, you're at the far right. And if you go past that, you just start at the left part of the texture again. So, so we can just ignore everything above one. So there we go. Um... I said I was going to show some some programmed movement, so we're going to actually turn this into a two-parter. Lots of two-parters lately, my apologies, but I try to have useful stuff in each part, so so um, hopefully this will help people out, and we'll have a little bit more parallax scrolling on the next episode. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, if you have any questions, please email me, pushypixels at pushypixels.com. You can also tweet me at Drakfire, that's D-R-A-K-F-Y-R-E. Please donate, patreon.com slash cookingwithunity. Really appreciate your support. You guys have a great one, and I'll catch you tonight with more Scape. See you then.